Okay, so today on numerical methods, as maybe always to give you an orientation, uh, we are discussing the numerical method called Monte Carlo method. Uh, we are discussing how to generate other distributions from sequences of no, uh, uniform distributed um, random drawings. Okay, and uh, the first method we discussed was the inversion of the distribution function. And for that, we had to actually uh, define uh, what is the inverse of the distribution function because the distribution function can be, uh, is monotone, but not strictly monotone. And for that, we defined some generalized version, uh, which you see here in the picture. So whenever you have, um, say, some area of uh, non-uniqueness, like here, uh, we take just the infimum of this uh, set. Huh? And uh, we could actually then show yeah, this lemma, we could prove this lemma, that uh, if you have given the inverse, this uh, generalized inverse of uh, the distribution function, then from a uniform random variable, so from a sequence of uniform drawings, uh, you can generate an F distributed random variable X uh, by applying the inverse here. So now what do we do if we do not have the inverse of the distribution function? So either we do not know a closed formula or we do not have a, a nice approximation like the one which we had for the normal distribution. Then here I would like to discuss an alternative method with you, which is called acceptance rejection. Also quite interesting from the way how it is uh, constructed. And this method makes some other assumptions. So actually, first, what do we like to do? So um, let's take the right pen. So what we like to do, we like to generate a sequence uh, generate a sequence let's call it xi and this sequence should be drawings of an f distributed random variable say I call it capital X. So this is what we have, but maybe we do not know, um, we do not know F. Okay, so there's no need to know F inverse in this method, yeah? or you even do not need to know F. So what we need to know is we know F prime, the density. We call that this is for example, the situation which we had for the normal distribution. Uh, for the normal distribution, density is one divided by square root two p times exponential minus x squared half. So we know the density, nice close formula. Um, you do not know f or f inverse in closed form. But then we need some additional stuff. Actually, we know, we need to know how to generate some utility sequence a sequence y i uh, and these are drawings of a g distributed uh, random variable 
y. So we need some other sequence. And this sequence should have a relation uh, to our function f or f prime, where we know that there is a constant c such that the, so a constant c such that c times the density of g is larger than the density of f. Yeah? So if you draw the two densities, um, the density of g should be above f. If there is a if there is some region where it is not above, it's maybe not a problem. You can you can multiply it with a c and shift it a little bit up. Yeah, uh, as long as this uh, uh, region has um, non-zero uh, values. Yeah, so we have this uh, trick with the constant. Yeah, we can use, but actually we need somehow the property that the density of g lies above uh, f. Most importantly in the asympto asymptotics, yeah? So F decays faster than G. So if you have something like this, and this is maybe not a very strong assumption, yeah? So for maybe exponential distributed random variable, exponential minus X squared, yeah? I immediately have exponential minus X yeah? decays slower. Yeah? So I could use an exponential distributed random variable to dominate the uh, normal distributed density in the other asymptotics. This is our situation. Actually, the third point, uh, the, uh, the requirement is even a little bit stricter. I need two sequences, uh, uh, one, one uniform independent one, but uh, essentially these are now the requirements. And these requirements are not so strong. And the claim is that if we have this situation, I can generate a sequence of F distributed um, random variable. Okay, maybe I correct a few typos here. F distributed. So, um, yeah, this is the situation. This is the corresponding lemma. So accept, acceptance, rejection, sampling. Let f denote a distribution function. The one for which we like to generate a sequence. Then given a sequence two-dimensional, ui, yi. So this is a sequence of a two-dimensional vector being u, y of random variables u and y, where u is uniform distributed. So u is uniform distributed on zero one. And y is the one which I had mentioned in the motivation, the one that is g distributed. In addition, both have to be independent. Okay, but maybe this is not a big uh, restriction here. So you know that if you have one uniform um, random sequence, if it is a pseudo number generator, we can just generate a two dimensional vector by populating the entries one by the other. Uh, so we can generate a uniform distributed sequence in two dimensions. And maybe if we can apply the inversion method for G, uh, we can generate from the second component, the G, and the two will be in independent. So G is, so, so the sequence YJ, yeah, which is G, G distributed, is some kind of uh, helper sequence. Actually, we will single out the points from this sequence. So now I need this assumption on the um, densities. So for the density of a G, yeah, which I call little g, and the density of F, which I call uh, little f. So maybe I take here the yellow. 
Okay, for these we have the relation that we find a constant C such that the density of F is smaller than the density of G uh, with some multiplied with some constant. So some C times um, G of X. Okay, so in, in uh, maybe I draw a small picture here, yeah, so if you have, for example, here a density, like, uh, say, uh, which, which color should I use? Yeah, so maybe like, like the normal distribution, yeah, so I have something like this, the normal distribution, which goes here, oops, like this, then maybe you can find some distribution function G, yeah, which decays here slower, yeah. So this is the G. Okay, and then you just multiply with the constant C, yeah, to move this here a little bit up. Okay, and then you have this criteria. Okay. So this here is uh, C times G, this is G, sorry, G, and this is the F. So I, I need to find a constant uh, C to dominate this. Uh, actually, later we will see that it's nice to have the smallest such constants. Okay, so this is the situation which I had already described. And then the sequence of the following numbers. So the sequence xi, where from yi, so yi is the sequence I have, which is g distributed, where we just take specific indices. So we just take here specific indices of yi, this sequence is F distributed. Yeah? So this, this, this sequence XI has distribution F. And what are the specific indices? So here it's take only specific indices. Yeah, so from the yj. Yeah. So how are these calculated? So I initialize, so actually here my i starts in zero. So I initialize k um, zero to zero. Yeah. And then I take the index ki is the next index, which is larger than the previous index. So this is just that I take the next uh, uh, guys in the sequence, for which actually the uniform number from our two-dimensional vector here is smaller than the y, uh, the g distributed number y, plugged into the density. Yeah? So f of y divided by c g of y this strange expression here. So actually here you have some uh, test criteria and your test criteria, if you take the number or not, is, is your uniform number smaller than what you get if you plug the G distributed number in the two densities, take the ratio and divide by C. Uh, so you see that we take a few numbers from the sequence y. So sometimes we accept the number, sometimes we reject the number and the criteria um, to accept or reject uh, the number is this thing here. So this is the criteria
if we accept or reject the y j to become a number x. Okay, maybe a small illustration, but I believe you should have the idea, yeah? So actually we need to generate two sequences. U, I, uh, I'll say U, J, and Y, J. So U sequence is here. I always used queen for U, yeah? So this is the sequence U. Uh, the two dimensional vector is uh, independent. This sequence U is uniform. This sequence Y is G distributed. Uh, so this is a G distributed. And this one here is uniform. Then on these, on this sequence, you compare what do you get for this by looking at here this criteria, uh, you look at this criteria and you check if the criteria is uh, true or false. Uh, so maybe here it is false. Maybe here it is true. And maybe we check a few more. Yeah, so you check these guys and maybe this one here is uh, also false, false, and that one is maybe true. Okay, then you take X, you take X is equal to Y if the criteria is true, yeah? So this here was our Y, so we take this one as dx. So let's take this one here as dx. And we take this one here as dx. The other ones are skipped. And this here is then the sequence xi. Ah, sorry, there was a rejected one. This one is taken here. This one is taken. And Maybe one more that is also accepted. So we have a few more points. So this one here is also accepted. So you see, you get fewer points out of this. Yeah, you have to sample uh, two times uh, the sequence and then you just single out one point with a certain probability. And, uh, but this one, this sequence is now F distributed. This is the claim of this lemma. Uh, okay, so let's prove that uh, this is an F distributed uh, sequence and maybe sometime uh, later or you can do it as an exercise, uh, you can maybe check it for a few examples. I have examples, uh, some more examples in the, in the script. Okay, so let's do a proof. We generate two sequences, U and Y. So be, here in this slide, I do not talk about sequences. I talk about the random variables. And uh, I, I just uh, uh, show you that the random variable X generated by this condition has F distribution. So the random variables are called U. So on my slide, I always had uh, the green color for the U and Y. Yeah? So this is the random variable behind the U sequence and the Y sequence. And the first thing to note is that the probability that U is less or equal uh, F of Y divided by C, G of Y, is just one divided by C. So the probability that we accept a point, yeah? probability that we accept the point so here we could maybe write probability 
that y in j is accepted. This probability is here our red box, our criteria. This is the probability that u is less than f of y divided by cg of y. This is the probability that we accept a point, which comes then a point for the sequence. And this probability is one divided by c. Okay, so this follows since, um, well, how do we do this? So the trick which I'm using here is coming again later on the slide. I have here the probability of some condition which depends on two random variables. And actually the probability is a function which maps a set of omega, yeah, so a set of little omegas uh, to a number. So which set is this? This is the set of all omegas. If you plug in the omega uh, inside the random variables, yeah, uh, that this is true. Yeah? So actually, if you write P of U less than F of Y divided by C G of Y, yeah. So then actually this is just the short notation for, I would like to have the probability of the set of all omegas for which this condition holds, that is to say u of omega is less than f of y of omega divided by c g of y of omega, okay. Close the set. Yeah, so this is a pointwise uh, 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 evaluation of this condition on omega. So, but in terms of random variables, you can interpret it as a two dimensional thing. Yeah, all values of u, all possible values of y. And to get rid of this two dimensional thing, uh, a nice trick is just to condition on one variable. So we can first, calculate the conditional probability, given that we already know that y has a certain value. Yeah? So the probability that u, the random variable u, is less than this expression under the condition that we know that y has some value um, little y. Okay, so if you condition, you are allowed to use this condition here in your expression. Yeah? So I can just replace the capital Y by the little y. Yeah? So this is just the probability that U uh, is less than this number. Yeah? So now this is a number. This is the set of all omegas where U of omega is less than this number. So this is like a marginal, uh, marginal thing. Yeah? So this is just the uh, one dimensional projection of this two-dimensional thing, yeah? projected along the line y equals little y. Okay, so, but now note that u is uniform. So this here is just the distribution function. So this little box here is just the distribution function of u. So the distribution function of u is just um, a constant. Yeah. So you just have that this is just this upper bound value. Uh, 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 sorry, the distribution function is uh, a linear function. Yeah. So it's just the the constant itself. Yeah. The number on the right hand side. So you just have this is just f of y divided by c g of y. Okay, so, uh, but actually we were interested here in the probability that u is less than f of capital Y. Yeah? But now since I have here the um, conditional, uh, 
I can get the joint distribution by integrating the conditional one. Yeah. So uh, this, the probability that we are, that u is less than equal f of y divided by cg of y is the integral of the conditional probability multiplied with the density integrated over all possible values of y. Yeah? So this is a standard trick yeah? uh, uh, which uh, you have, uh, you wish, which you can do yeah? if you like to do this. Um, so let's plug this in. So you see this here is uh, f of y divided by c g of y. So this g of y cancels here. And what uh, is uh, left is just the integral of f of y divided by c. I integrate the density over the whole domain. So this is just one. Yeah? So it's just one divided by c. Okay, so that was the first uh, remark. So actually you see that here, um, here we wrote that this probability is the probability that we accept a point. Yeah? So um, the probability that we accept a point is actually just one divided by this constant C. Yeah? So we like to have this constant C to be uh, as close as possible to uh, one. Yeah? So usually C is larger than one, but we like to have it as close as possible um, to one. Okay. Uh, now let's prove the uh, result. So that is X, um, the sequence X F distributed. I will use again this trick with the conditioning. Okay, so for the conditional expectation, A conditional B, I already mentioned this is the probability A intersected B relative to the size of the event space B, so the probability of B. And we will use this with actually two sets, the probability or the set y is smaller than a given constant x, which is the constant in our distribution function, and b is the set that we accept a point. Yeah? So this was the red box on our previous side, the set that we accept a point. So this is our condition. So my sequence x is actually equal to the sequence y. So x is y if we accept the point. So under the condition that we accept the point. If the point is accepted. So the probability that X is below a little X, so this is the distribution function. Yeah? So we like to calculate the distribution function. The probability that capital X is less or equal little X is the probability that Y is less or equal little X under the condition that the point was accepted. So with the conditional probability that u, so with the conditional uh, condition that u is less than f of y divided by cg of y. So now these are here my two uh, sets, the yellow one and the red one. And now I use the definition of the conditional probability. It is the intersection of the set y is smaller than x and the point was accepted, divided by the probability that we accept the point. Okay, so the probability that we accept the point is just uh, one divided by C. 
this is one divided by C. This was what we first observed. Okay, so this is just a C times the probability that we are less than X with the Y and the point is accepted. Yeah? So the set of um, where the points are accepted. So now I have again um, the situation here that uh, um, I have a random variable Y yeah, inside this probability and a random variable U inside this probability. So actually, I believe U was always green. Was U green? Yeah, U was always green. So maybe I mark this here for U. So I have here U and Y. Uh, oh, sorry, not here. So I would like to mark it here. U and Y. And I do the same trick that we condition now yeah, on some um, variable. So let's condition on y. So let's fix uh, y equals z and integrate over the whole density, uh, over the whole domain and multi so uh, multiplied with the density. Okay, so all y's are then replaced by the little z. Oh, actually, I could have used a little y. Okay, and we integrate over the z multiplied with the density. And recall, we know the density uh, of uh, um, this uh, guy, which is, is y. Yeah? And now you see that, um, what is this set here? This is the probability that little z is smaller than x and the uniform distributed random number u, a random variable u, is smaller than this constant f of z divided by cg of z. So now I integrate over z, and here in the probability there is the condition z is smaller than x. So actually I can replace here the upper bound, and I can get rid of this first part of the set. So, and since you know that this is a uniform, so this guy here is um, a uniform. No, so the probability of u smaller than little u is just little u. Yeah, so you can just plug this here, here, yeah? and you have the density g from here, and these two guys cancel, yeah? and you have one divided by c in front, which cancels, and this is now integrate f, but integrate f up to only x. So this is the distribution function of distribution function f of x. So we have proven that x using this method has distribution function f. Okay, so the method looks maybe a little bit complicated, but actually it, it is not. Yeah, you can have a very small implementation, very clean. You just need the densities, two sequences, check the condition, accept or reject the point. Yeah? And um, you can, as I already uh, gave you some hints, uh, use this to perform uh, a sampling of the normal distributed uh, random variable yeah, without actually using the distribution function of the normal distribution. You just uh, need some uh, thing about the density and you can use the exponential distribution and the exponential distribution we can use with the inversion of the uh, distribution function. Okay, so maybe you have a code session uh, with this or you can try it as an exercise. Um, that's it for today. Yeah, thank you. See you next time.